Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here with Jan Swartz, who's the group president, I should say the new group president for Holland America Group. Now, what's Holland America Group? Well, it's Holland America, Princess, Seaborn, and I believe P&O Australia. Did I get that right, Jan? That's right, James. Okay, so we're going to talk to Jan about her, her new job here and also, of course, some of the questions du jour involving coronavirus, etc. And we're going to find out all about that and more on Insider Travel Report. Uh, first of all, Jan, congratulations on your promotion to Group President, uh, Holland America Group. Uh, how and when did you hear about this? Well, thank you, James. Yes, this is new news, only announced um, just about two weeks ago. Um, and it was, uh, I'm very excited to serve all of the brands of Holland America Group and mm -hmm. very grateful to Stein Cruz, who you'll remember. No, I know Stein been. very well. He's a great guy and uh, a guy with the best name in cruising, actually. But that's <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. It was, came in handy. It did. Yes, it and did. so he gave an incredible 20 years, right, of his professional Life to Holland America Line and Holland America Group and is now um, going on to serve all of Carnival Corporation in a new role. So we're both looking forward to, uh, to supporting our brands. Now, what has Carnival Corp uh, tasked you with to do as president of, of the group now? Well, really, our ambition is to set up the group uh, to be as effective and efficient as possible in serving our guests our trade partners and all the stakeholders around the world. As you know, we're really privileged to have four incredibly powerful brands mm -hmm. in Holland America Line, Princess, Seaborn, and p and Australia. And so we're spending our time as a leadership team to ask ourselves, how can we be easier to do business with? Right. And how do we make um, the magic in each of our brands really shine? Okay, that's great. Now, uh, of course, I couldn't leave you without asking the latest on when all of these brands might restart cruising, although it seems to be a moving target every time we, that's, that's our, our, our latest, our releases, they keep, everyone keeps pushing back the months. And so uh, when, do you, when do you foresee that you'll, you'll be back in the water roughly? You're right, James, it is a moving target. I would share, though, that the dialogue with the U.S. CDC has moved from no sale to sale if. And so right. we are in constant conversation with them, uh, pursuing clarification of all of the new policies and procedures and processes that we'll have to put in place so that we can safely return to service here sailing from North America. And uh, so all those conversations are underway and we are very hopeful uh, with that work and also the positive news uh, in terms of vaccines right, right. Uh, being now actively uh, begun to be distributed, uh, we think that the, the combination of those factors uh, should set us up to return to sale in 2021. And we're hopeful that, um, that we can do that uh, as swiftly as, as possible. Well, I know that uh, even before all this happened, uh, all the major cruise lines, including Carnival Corpse Lines, uh, all had new procedures, health and safety procedures in place, ready to get back to cruising. And then uh, we were all wondering, you know, whether the CDC would extend its no sale order. It didn't do that. It went into this phased approach to restart cruising. But that was like a 50 page document that seemed to be, uh, I mean, I read it. I, I did read the whole thing. And it was like, this is going to be a tough one because you got like four phases to get through. Uh, and now you're in the midst of this trying to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. But then, you know, if we have the vaccine, maybe you don't need all of those. I don't know. That's right. I think it's such a fluid situation that, um, you know, time will tell uh, how the phases play out and whether the vaccine accelerates any of the phases. Um, certainly, we're pleased to see a number of vaccines on the market with, you know, 95% plus efficacy, yeah. which I think uh, exceeded most people's expectations. So, um, we just are working closely uh, with the health authorities in the US, but also many other countries around the world so that um, we're in alignment and prepared to sail uh, when the world's ready. So I guess your conversation will sort of go with the CDC if, if you can get a, a, a lot of people vaccinated. I mean, maybe you should offer everybody going on a cruise ship instead of a test, a vaccine. 
<laughs> I mean, that would that would help help, I think, and certainly certain I mean, the, the whole cruise industry committed to uh, having everyone tested. That's right. Um, and, and that was going to be the way to get out of this. But now maybe it's everybody gets a vaccine, at least those that want it. I don't know. That might speed things up a bit, don't you think? Maybe you could put in a phone call, James. I, I should. I should. I, I, I want to see cruising back sooner than later. Believe me, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully the CDC, between the combination of vaccines and, and this phased in approach, and you'll see sailing by, what do you think, mid-year maybe or the spring? In some cases, yeah, we're, we're very hopeful that, you know, late spring is what we're currently um, targeting. And yet, you know, each week we get further and further clarification on the requirements and the timelines. And of course, the, you know, the progress on the vaccine and therapeutics and all of those things, I'm sure, are weighing in on um, on the experts uh, point of view. So. We'll just have to take it a day at a time. And we're so grateful for all of our um, trade partners, patients, because I know this has been an incredibly difficult time for everyone in travel and uh, particularly those whose livelihoods. Yeah, they they, they depend on selling cruises and that's what we do. And uh, I just uh, was on a a phone call this morning with Michelle Fee and Vicky Garcia and uh, that we're still talking about that. They just had their, uh, cruise planners virtual show last week. And so we were getting an update on how that worked and they're looking for the, they're very positive though. I will say that is there, they, they, they say, of course they, their retort is what else would we be? I mean, what's the alternative, right? <laughs> uh, you know, if we're not positive, it's not, it's not looking too good, but uh, I think they're, they're in the right, uh, the right way to do that is to look at it on a positive situation at this point. Uh, now uh, for, I mean, I know you at princess uh, before this and, and, and also P and O Australia uh, you, if you had to revise any itineraries or change deployments for your different brands, for 21, uh, given the uncertainty of the COVID situation, uh, where are you focused on cruising for each of these right now? Well, so we're in, um, you know, active review of our deployment around the world as we get more information about the respective timelines of those conversations with the um, relevant regulatory authorities. But clearly, for Holland America Group, a key focus area is preparation for a successful season in Alaska. Right, absolutely. Princess and Holland America Line um, have long offered the best cruise alternatives in Alaska, and we also own and operate our own lodges and trains and buses for an integrated land and sea vacation options. And so we have a lot of planning resource around looking at the Alaska restart and engaging with the local communities there um, to ensure that we have everything in place to make that uh, as successful as possible. So you forecast that we will see a, 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 an Alaska season this year, uh, given that you start in the spring, hopefully? We sure hope so. Yeah, well, that's a, such a popular cruise, and it's been missed last year, that's for sure. And even your Seaborne line, uh, you know, uh, now that you're overseeing that, they have Alaska, too. You know, so everybody, that's right. uh, there's been a growth in that market like crazy in the last few years, and it's uh, been great for travel advisors and their, their customers. So, uh, let, I have to share, I think I've gone to Alaska to visit our ships almost every of the past 20 years, and so... Um, I, I, like many of your um, followers, really missed Alaska in 2020. Oh, yeah. No, it's so a great I can't wait cruise. to get back. No, none of us. I think all of us really want to get back there and travel advisors want to get back to selling it. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, you know, you, you were involved in this in the beginning. What's it been like? Uh, being a kind of the center of this crisis way back 10 months ago, we were, you were out in Japan with Diamond Princess, which unfortunately had the outbreak of coronavirus. That's back in February. Uh, wow. And, and you, and you, now you, you know, you're, you're going to be overseeing Holland America Princess, Seaborne p uh, What have you learned about the virus and its impact uh, based on this long experience now? And, and it's hard to say, you know, 10 months is now a long experience, right? <laughs> it seems yes. like forever. Yes. You know, it's, I think it's so difficult um, for all of us to cast our minds back to what kind of where everyone's heads were back in, you know, February and March when we were experiencing uh, COVID-19 for the first time right on Diamond Princess and then a little later Grand Princess. Right. 
you know, so little was known at that time about the virus, you know, how it was transmitted, um, how it could be treated. And now in retrospect, you know, there's been a lot of scientific evidence that community transmission of the disease, which at the time was believed to be largely contained in Wuhan, China, right. uh, ha- had actually made its way around the world and in, in, in quite a few places. And so I just have to say that that entire period uh, in our company history, you know, was, was so heartbreaking in many ways as we um, really strive to do everything in our power to be in service of our guests and our teammates as they bravely uh, battled, you know, COVID-19 on, on the front lines. No, um, but I would, I would share that, you know, we've learned so much since then about how to mitigate the risks of COVID-19, you know, in the form of um, testing, layers of testing, wearing masks, hygiene, adjustments to the HVAC system, and many of our practices and procedures that I think that those learnings are going to serve us well for all health-related needs for decades to come. No, absolutely. And then you kind of were, I hate to say you were the testing ground for Mm -hmm. how to figure out how to address these concerns uh, because, you know, nobody knew anything about it. I mean, we all knew about nor- norovirus and things like that, but had never encountered anything quite like this. Yes, there was SARS and other things, but that really never affected the cruise industry. This mm-hmm. was the first time it was, you were front and center and, you know, you had, you know, I, I, I was actually, uh, I, I was driving up to Rhode Island uh, back in, I guess it was March or February, and uh, this DJ said, oh, uh, uh, I... I uh, was reporting on Diamond Princess and, and uh, said, uh, you know, telling all the thing about the people who have been repatriated. And then he said, oh, you'll never catch me on a cruise ship. I want to choose where I want to die. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is just the absolute worst message. And I wrote a column about how you can't give in to fear uh, right after that. And then, of course, people gave in to fear. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, unfortunate. But it was like you, you were, unfortunately, the, the center of that. And then, uh, you know, then again, if you look back, the number of COVID cases overall and in, in percentage wise for all cruise ships is not anywhere near what the population is. And uh, that's right. I think because testing was not, um, you know, regularly available at that point in time, and actually took a, a little while to get rolled out, I think, you know, we all didn't have situational awareness no. about how pervasive it was. But I'll give you credit. You were out there, you were out there at the pier and, and trying to deal with the guests. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to do that when you don't really know what's, you know, what's the solution. And uh, it was, it was a hard time for the cruise industry. I'm sure it was a hard time for princess and all this. And, but now, yeah. now we're, as we're emerging, you know, uh, you can look back and sort of figure out, what we learned, as you said, what, what, well, I, you know, I can tell you, I've never been more proud of our uh, teams and, you know, how courageously they showed up in service of our guests and the communities that we visit and, um, you know, and, and really helped take care of each other. Right. No, that's Um, great. And I know you had to repatriate the cruise and, uh, you know, all, all these things as well as the passengers in, in many cases. So there was a lot of logistical stuff to go on there for a few months. And I know everybody was digging out of that. And from a travel advisor point of view, they were, you know, basically getting cruises canceled and having the, you, you guys right. came up with the future cruise credit. Uh, and now we have all these future credit, cruise credit, cre- credits that are going to be coming, you know, next year. Hopefully these people will come back. So it's kind of. Been- yes. Yes. We so appreciate our travel advisors, patients um, with, you know, working with the guests and on their refunds and um, the rebookings with the future cruise credits. But I do believe, like so many uh, travel advisors have shared with me, that once, um, you know, that all the protocols are worked out and the health authorities say it's a go, we have so many clients uh, looking forward to sailing once again. No, that's great. We hope that's happened sooner rather than later. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening with the fleets in your brands. Uh, a number right. of ships have been retired in Holland America, uh, Princess fleets, and so now you may have a little less capacity for now. Do you think that's a good thing, given that maybe demand might be a little off in 2021? 
Well, I think we really use, you know, you never want to let a crisis go to waste. And I think right. this crisis allowed us to accelerate um, our strategic plans in terms of divestiture of select ships in um, across a number of our brands, both Princess and Holland America, as well as P&O Australia. And so we were able to sell um, some of the older ships. And that allows us to really focus our time, attention, and capital on the ships that we will be sailing uh, for decades to come. And then, of course, we have a really uh, exciting, robust new build pipeline. For yeah, I was going to ask brand. you about that. Yeah, what, what are the ships that are coming up? Uh, I know the one I remember right away is Seaborne Venture, which is what you now oversee, and that's going to be their right. first expedition ship, right? Right. So Seaborne Venture is scheduled for December of 2021. And then, of course, for Holland America Line, we have its new flagship for the fleet, Rotterdam, which is scheduled for delivery in August of 2021. And then, of course, for Princess, we have the Discovery Princess at the tail end of 2021, which, as you know, is a sister ship to Sky Princess and sure. Enchanted Princess. And then we have, you know, our next generation Princess uh, ships that will be delivered in 23 and 25. And so we're really excited um, to launch all of those ships into the marketplace and sort of change the narrative to focus on uh, all of the exciting new developments. And I should add to that, that you may have seen the recent princess press release that we have committed to activating medallion class capabilities on the that. entire princess fleet upon yep. return to service. So we reported on that. Yes. And that, and so I guess you've used your time well here uh, to put medallion class and, and, and princess really is the only carnival brand so far that has uh, adopted wholeheartedly uh, medallion class, and I was actually at a press function in New York here to see how it all worked uh, about, about way back when. I think Arnold Donald was there and a bunch of people. I think you were there too. I don't, it was just, uh, it was on, uh, it was a Coral Princess. I can't remember what the, what the uh, uh, ship was in Brooklyn, uh, and I got a chance to see how it works. It's pretty amazing. It is amazing, and there's so many capabilities in medallion class cruising that are perfectly suited for this extraordinary time. Right. So, you know, totally touchless payment, um, completely frictionless entrance to the ship, hands-free, you know, mu mustering is going to be totally transformed between our interactive television and um, just being able to walk through what used to be your muster station. Sure. And then, of course, um, we have Ocean Now, which is on-demand services. So with the touch of a few buttons on your phone or via a crew member's device, you can have any food or beverage or retail item brought to you wherever you choose to be. So in the world where we're transitioning through COVID-19, you can find your favorite spot in the piazza or the top deck and have dinner brought to you. I actually thought that was my favorite feature, although I have friends who like the no muster thing, you know. Yeah. And I, said, I said to them, but that was a social occasion. We could all look around and see how we all looked in life jackets. But uh, apparently we will not see that anymore on your ships. <laughs> right. That's right. So that's going to be great, the, the having medallion class. I know it was only on a, a number of your vessels in Princess. And, uh, you know, perhaps you'll start to think about expanding it to the, the other brands that you oversee soon. Uh, well, and I think it's great for our trade partners because it gives them a clean and clear message of distinction for Princess Cruises with the entire fleet being medallion class activated. And I think some of the unique capabilities within it really meeting the needs of today's consumer. No, that's great. And uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, final question. I, I, and this is kind of a no brainer answer, but uh, do you believe travel advisors will remain crucial to the sale of cruises even more now in a, than in, than absolutely, in the future? Absolutely, travel advisors will be crucial. And, you know, they've always played such an important role in marrying right clients with the right brand for them. And I think in this time when consumers are going to need even extra reassurance or navigating, right, the tourism market at this time, um, they can play such a special role in reaffirming Cruise as a great choice, uh, mm -hmm. our brands as the right choice for their client, and then supporting them through that return to Cruise experience. No, I'm sure they will. Now, anything else you want to tell our uh, 75,000 Travel Advisor subscribers about Holland America Group and, and your new role? 
I would just say we're eternally grateful for all of our travel advisor support of all four of our brands during this crucial 2020 period. And we just wish everyone very happy holidays. I know you guys will join us in wanting to ring in a new year. <laughs> and uh, as we say, we're on our way to brighter days in 2021. Well, Jan, it sounds like I might be seeing a lot of you towards the end of next year with about three new ships, and hopefully I'll get a chance to come out and take a look at the, the new vessels. I know I was supposed to go to Seaboard Venture, and, and hopefully the Princess and the Holland America ships. I've been on a lot of Rotterdam, uh, a lot of Holland America ships over the years, uh, uh, whether it's in I guess whether it is in Rotterdam. I was there years ago when I think it was Europa launched and some other ones, but uh, I lose track of all those damn ships, as they say. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, it's great to see you. Uh, I, I hope we'll, we'll get to uh, meet in person soon, sooner rather than later. And I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us. I know you're very busy with the new role and trying to get everything together. Uh, and obviously, you know, there's, there's no crisis going on. So, I mean, why? it should be very easy right now, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, it's my pleasure. Great to see you. Take care and stay healthy and well. I will. You too. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.